covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. If you enjoy your weekly tech news with a slight Linux bias, become part of our fleet. Choose your rank at patreon.com slash category five. Let's get into it. Debian officially supports the Pinebook Pro. That's coming up. But first, prepare to find your next distro, CentOS sysadmins. There will not be a CentOS 9. For years, CentOS has been a stable open source release based on and functionally compatible with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. That all ended this week in what some users are calling a betrayal to the FOSS community, when Red Hat announced it is severing support for CentOS, and the CentOS team simultaneously said they're moving to a rolling release with their CentOS stream distro. A user commented on the CentOS blog post saying, this is dumb. The entire premise and the only reason anyone uses CentOS is because it's a rebuilt Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Congratulations on undermining that nitwits. The OP received many plus ones for their spot on insight. Will this mean transitioning to a CentOS stream? Will the shift to a rolling release result in more admins looking at trusted alternatives such as Ubuntu or Debian? Red Hat said in their announcement Tuesday, we believe that the real value of open source lies in innovating and solving problems and have learned that a rebuild or clone doesn't provide that opportunity. Are you a CentOS user? Do you feel betrayed by your trusted distro? Or are you excited to see what's next with the CentOS stream? Comment below. Updates for the CentOS Linux 8 distribution will continue until the end of 2021. CentOS Linux 7 users will thank the stars they chose the LTS since support will continue until June 30th, 2024. CentOS Stream 9 will launch next summer. I am not a Red Hat user, mm. um, so it doesn't impact me. Uh, but I know. Well, good for you, Jeff. <laughs> but I can I can <laughs> see how this would have a significant impact to just suddenly walk away. Now, thankfully, yeah. they're taking a year to transition. But how do you just cut ties like that? Yeah, and uh, now I am I'm also not a Red Hat user, or CentOS user. I'm very much a Debian baby, as our viewers know. Absolutely, yeah. I love Debian and Debian derivatives. Um, but in this case, now, who does this impact? I mean, I've got customers who. Uh, who do use CentOS. I know oh, some okay. sysadmins who use CentOS. And in fact, my church uses CentOS as their email service um, oh, server. Okay. And so it leaves them in a weird situation where, okay, you know, uh, hey, I've been trying to transition them over to, you know, some, <laughs> some other service for some time. But now it comes down to, okay, now the very operating system, the very distribution that you are using for your main server is no longer supported. Right. And is being cut off and, and all ties are being cut off from Red Hat. So, I mean, it, it is really a burn. Um, you know, we're gonna see in the next coming months, because, uh, you know, a lot of stuff right now is, what is the reaction of the user base? And so yeah. some of the news comes from that reaction. Yeah. So what's the response of the sysadmin? Well, the response is like, we feel betrayed. Right, but the one thing, and I, and I do, somewhat agree with the comment from from Red Hat is that you know the community is about advancing and growing and developing as opposed to just building off something that's older so I get why they want to make this move I don't even know if that's the point it's more like CentOS is basically an alternative to yes. Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Red Hat right. Enterprise Linux of course requires the purchase of licensing yeah. So does that come into play where, well, we don't really want to support the clone that everyone is using <laughs> because we don't get paid for it? Again, you know, don't shoot the messenger. I'm, you know, a lot of stuff right now, it's very, very fresh in the news, uh, comes from the reactionary response of yeah. the sysadmin. And, and right now it feels like Red Hat has pulled the plug on something great and it's going to hurt a lot of people. And and not only like hurt, but like it's really tough to suddenly have support yanked out from under you right. on a distribution that you've been using for 10 years. And how easy, and I say that kind of tongue in cheek, how easy is it to walk away from that and switch to a new system? Like, yeah, I think you would have, like for anybody who's using it, I'm, you know, thinking your church they have to build a whole new system. Essentially. Like, that's well, not simple. Here's the choice. The choice becomes, 
do we now transition to CentOS Stream, mm -hmm. which is a rolling release, which is what CentOS, that, that was the appeal of CentOS, is that it was not a rolling release. Yeah. So now do we go to uh, CentOS Stream and become a rolling release, or do we start looking at Debian, which is going to fall under that category. Ubuntu is a very well supported by Canonical. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it opens up now, uh, now we need to start looking at, okay, well, if, if we're no longer going to be on this, what, we, what we're going to call a stable release, and what I mean by that is not, not that anything else is unstable in the traditional sense, but we've got two different release models. Yeah. You've got that, like, here's a distro that you can install and it's just going to continue maintaining itself for years versus the rolling release cycle where you need to keep it up to date all the time. You need to upgrade to the next distro or the next version of the distro and could have some breakage in the, in the meantime. And, yep. and so there's, you know, that, that kind of support issue as well. So do we start looking at other distros? It'll be interesting to see and only time's going to tell. So... I wonder too how much um, this might drive, uh, and not just the thought of moving to Debian or moving to Ubuntu, but does this also drive us to think, should we consider some of the cloud options? I mean, well, if, if the that. church says, okay, well, our mail server is no longer supported, so are we going to transition this old mail server to something new, or are we just going to scrap it all together and say, you know what, let's just buy a NAS? and use that for file sharing and go with one of the cloud options for email. That might be the better solution. So might be. I'm, I'm eager to hear your comments below. I'd love to know how this affects you, how it impacts you, what your thoughts are. Do you fall on the side of the sysadmin who is kind of feeling betrayed right now by Red Hat? Uh, and even so much as to say feeling betrayed by CentOS? Um, or do you fall into the, the camp where it's like, okay, well, I'm gonna have to transition to something and it's exciting and it's a chance to try something new and fresh. Uh, where do you fall? Comment below. Love mm -hmm. to hear from you. On the coattail of Ubuntu's announcement of official support for the Raspberry Pi 4, it seems Debian doesn't want to be left out. Their next release contains a Debian installer enhanced for ARM devices, with official support out of the box for, among others, the $200 Pinebook Pro, Pro Linux laptop from Pine64. An alpha version of the Debian installer for Buster successor Bullseye has added support for the Linux 5.9 kernel series and improvements to the ARM64 architecture support. Along with that comes support for the new ARM devices including not only Pine64's Pinebook Pro, but also the original $99 Pinebook. Support has also been added for the friendly ARM's NanoPi Neo Air and NanoPi Neo Plus 2, as well as several other single-board computers from a variety of manufacturers. Could we be starting to see the transition to an ARM-based server room? Post your thoughts in the comments below. We've still got a half a year left before Debian 11 goes stable, but Bullseye is available now as Debian testing, so if you're particularly adventurous or just really want to get a Debian-powered Pinebook Pro for Christmas, feel free to give it a try now. Becca raises an interesting point in that, you know, could this be the start of a transition in the server room? We were talking about CentOS and, yep. and the transition there, but could this be the start of a transition not only to new distribution, but also new architecture? I think it could. I mean, I, I have, I have watched ARM grow and gain more um, user base in the yeah. last probably year. It's been pretty significant. It's happening quickly, very quickly, and so I'm very intrigued to see where this takes things mm -hmm. because I do think ARM could really become the new standard. It's fast and it's cheap. Yeah, and not only that, but to think of. All of the single board computers out there that are ARM based, I mean, maybe there's still a hesitation to put, um, at least to rely and depend on single board computing in, yeah. the, in the data center. Right. And that, there is some truth in that. And, and part of that comes from the reliability of storage. So you think about a Raspberry Pi with an SD card. Well, do you really want your entire infrastructure housed on an SD card? Probably not. No. But 
ARM is a lot more than just single board computers, and it's not limited to SD cards. You look at things from, you know, boards from Odroid, you look at boards from Pine64 and other competitors to Raspberry Pi, and they all support eMMC. Yeah. And in fact, a lot of them from both of those manufacturers and a lot of other manufacturers are supporting um, M.2. Yes. So you can stick an NVMe drive on your single board computer. Yeah. And now you're running like something that is screaming fast, super, super fast, super reliable, and uh, that belongs in the data center, if you ask me. I completely agree. And I mean, right now, you know, in my day job, we're dealing with servers and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And yeah. one of the things we've been talking about lately is getting our own server. And so, what, you know, with this story, it makes me think are we at the point where we could run, uh, you know, take like a hosting server or, you know, a, mm -hmm. a, a, you know, a cloud server and run it off, you know, a Rock Pro 64 or something. Sure, why not? Where you've got it hooked <laughs> up to, you know, a whole bunch of terabyte hard drives through USB or something for yeah. the storage space. But that... Not even USB. Like, think, well, and it has USB 3. Yeah. But, but think about um, iSCSI. Yeah, for example, yeah, sure. Right, good example. Um, but the data center isn't, uh, I mean, SBCs flip the economics of the whole situation yes. on its head. Because rather than having one Intel server with two Xeon processors and 32 cores and, and Which are 100 like gigs of RAM. Power hogs. And super expensive. Yeah. Rather than having one of those to do 10 different things, you just have 10 single board computers doing those 10 different things. And your cost not only up front goes way down, but your cost ongoing for the, way the cheaper. you know the actual power that you're using, the heat that you're generating and, and the noise yeah. from those big old servers. I mean, it's really flipping it on its head. But keep in mind, Mac, uh, Apple are actually pushing their MacBook Pros and the MacBook Air and, yes. and uh, their Mac lineup of hardware into the ARM architecture as well That's with right. their new yeah. M1 processors. So we're really, you know, it's not just single board computer hobbyist stuff anymore. We're talking Macs. Yeah, which and, is huge. And if we're talking Macs, which are, you know, they have that kind of aura about them of being an innovative company and they push trends and, and, and they kind of shift the industry in, in so many ways. Um, when are we going to start seeing real good, solid um, servers, like 1U, 2U, 3U servers that we can stick in our server rack in place of those Intel yeah. equivalents? That Absolutely. might happen. Well, we want to hear your thoughts. Let us know. Would you use an ARM-based single board computer to run your server. Mm. Where do you think this is going to take things? Let us know, comment below, send us in your thoughts. Don't miss the other stories we're following this week. First, the EU is pushing for home workers to have the right to disconnect. Plus, scientists have created a plane that flies without fuel. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure you catch the full stories. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Thanks for watching.